We are officially so close to the sun now. Hey guys, welcome back to another vid. Oh, I almost fell. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm super excited to review the book that I have for you guys today. But of course, you know the drill. Let's review what's on the reading pipeline. Now, I'm currently reading Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And speaking of Taylor Jenkins Reid, I don't know if you guys are aware, but the Evelyn Hugo adaptation will be announcing their cast soon. And I am both excited and fearful about that. I mean, like, I'm a little bit nervous because this book is reportedly gonna be adapted as a movie and if you have read the book that just that just doesn't work but you know it's a little bit too early to tell and at this point you just have to trust the process but i'll try not to have my hopes all up if you don't know the book is about a celebrated tennis player who is way past her prime but is yet to take on the biggest match of her life now i don't know about you guys but it's giving me a lot of billy jean king and serena williams and i'm so excited where this book will take me also it helps that i will devour anything by taylor jenkins read i swear now i do have other books on my list for this april including the encyclopedia of fairies by heather fawcett i read somewhere that this book is actually part of a series so i'm not so sure if the other books in this series are out yet i've yet to do my research about that so yes that's on my april tbr i might insert a book or two and rearrange the list as we go that all said let's cue the intro and start the review Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. <laughs> so for today's video, I am reviewing this book by the amazing Stacey Willingham. This is actually my first book from Stacey Willingham and I'm so excited to read some more because this one was really really good you know like straight off the bat like the book is good when the first chapter just hooks you in now the book follows Isabel or Izzy as those who are close to her like to call her just a year ago, Izzy experienced such a traumatic event in her life when her infant son Mason was taken from his crib. And there were no like witnesses and no evidence of a break-in. So as you might have guessed, the circumstances surrounding his disappearance makes Izzy look so so suspicious. To quote the book, many people including the police and the general public speculate that the incident might have happened from inside the house and like as a reader you're also made to second guess what's going on izzy herself is such an unreliable narrator you see izzy's been suffering from severe insomnia and i could say a lot of stress on top of mason's disappearance her husband ben had left her and had jumped into a relationship with a much younger woman so yeah there's a lot to unpack about izzy's life including some secrets that she harbors from her own childhood now i'm not gonna spoil that for you but basically i will say this you will get everything you want from an addicting mystery novel from this book it's so hot guys like i can't even like on the air conditioning because it messes with the audio <laughs> now you get an unreliable and flawed narrator with izzy she's understandably going through a lot in this book she goes through childhood trauma gaslighting from her own husband the public shaming her and blaming her for mason's disappearance you name it but like one thing i really like about izzy's character is that she's incredibly human she doesn't do anything that overtly frustrates you and her decisions are completely rational she would resort to actions that someone in that mindset would understandably do and you know like huge props to willingham's writing her words just flow right and she just made Izzy a great narrator. Now the secondary characters are pretty great too. Um, they never really feel like they're just there to move the plot forward but it feels like they're there to really explain so much about Izzy's life and what led her to this state of mind. Now another major character that I would like to highlight in this book is Waylon. Now you guys know how much I love through crime podcasts. I, in fact, I did a video of that previously i'll link it down below if you want to check that out but anyway yes he's a true crime podcaster and he meets izzy early on in the book and they develop like this symbiotic relationship with each other now i'm not so sure if this is an actual spoiler maybe like a slight spoiler but it doesn't really have a significance to the plot but if you guys are wondering waylon and izzy they never really do develop like a romantic or intimate relationship with each other okay so i'm using the word intimate very lightly here because some of you guys who have read the book are would argue that they have a level of spiritual intimacy towards each other but i guess what i'm trying to say is that they never get physically intimate and I don't know, I feel like that's just one of the strongest points of this book. Because I feel like if Willingham went that direction, it would totally wreck 
the narrative that she has go. I feel like I have to take like five minute breaks. And then there's Ben, Izzy's husband, Jesus. Ben's like the typical Ben Affleck character. You know, the whole Nick Dunn, gone girl stereotype. He's not totally likable and has skeletons in his closet too type of character. And while you just have that bad taste in your mouth whenever he comes into a scene, I feel like Ben doesn't really get crucified by the public at all. You see, when something harmful happens to a child, the first place the public points their fingers to is the mom. And I feel like that social commentary was properly explored in this book. I mean, it's so easy to blame a woman. She should have known better. Dad was out at work bringing home the bacon, so she had one job to watch her child. She's an unfit mom, you know, those stuff. And I think Stacey Willingham really did a good job handling that and bringing these types of issues into life. And at the same time, she never lets Izzy wallow in the blatant sexism from the general public. Instead, she really and states that Izzy is just a woman who is longing to find her son, no matter what the stakes. Of course, like any good mystery, there is a big twist in the end. And obviously, I'm not spoiling that here. And overall, I think the twist was okay. I was a little bit close to solving it, and I was close. It wasn't really the person that I had in mind, but it was close. I just want to emphasize that. That all said, I do think that's also where the book falls short. Like, once the big twist is revealed, it just fireballs into an abrupt ending. And I just don't think that the culprit's motives and the culprit themselves was really well explored enough to explain why they did what they did. Oh my god, it's so difficult to talk about this book without spoiling it. Anyway, I think it is the twist that really makes it lose half a star at least for me. Overall, I rated All the Dangerous Things 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Speaking of Goodreads, if you do want to follow me on that platform, I have linked it down below. And of course, since you're here, I have a small favor to ask and that's to click that like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!